Hi there, everybody. My name is Dan Fight, and uh, I accidentally found a bunch of really crucial evidence about secret military domestic operations. I think that this uh, kind of thing is basically very, very similar to what people commonly think of as martial law, including uh, military detention facilities with American citizens, search and seizure, things of that nature. So. Let's uh, take a quick look here and uh, find out exactly how you can dig up this information for yourself in this quick video. Alright, so what we do is we search for USAR North Con Plan 3501. And the first thing we get is uh, this guy right here, this presentation. So let's uh, get ready to download that here. And it'll show you how to get that downloading. It says this connection is untrusted. I understand the risks. Add exception. Cha-cha. Get certificate. And then confirm security exception. You have to do that. It's annoying. So now my computer, okay, now it wants to save the file. Save the PowerPoint. Boom. Alright. 7 megs. Okay. So it is hosted on uh, ePortal.usace.army.mil. Alright, let's look at the file. Okay, so this is the uh, very interesting presentation to check out. So here's how it works. Um, this uh, presentation was supposed to be for something called the New Madrid Seismic Zone um, Earthquake Exercise, which basically would be a huge test of what would happen in an earthquake um, in the heartland of the United States. Uh, basically, uh, there'd be this is a fault line zone in this area here. And so the Army um, wants to do a test to see if they can set up a command center using one of these methods. This is basically the same system that was used in the Gulf Water Horizon disaster. So it's very, very comparable to that. And uh, it's very interesting in and of itself, all this material is. But what's even crazier is the information on slide number two in presentation number 11, which, as we look here, has information saying that the purpose of this briefing is to receive your approval on actions completed for revising con plan 3502 civil disturbance operations with reason for revising the overview a synopsis of the base plan and the way ahead and somebody named Colonel Francie the chief of staff received this briefing last Wednesday on the 10th of February and their guidance was incorporated so what we have here is an accidental note that was accidentally left in this presentation about basically an entirely different plan than the earthquake plan which is con plan 3501 instead it's con plan 3502 so as we go through the presentation we can look at a little more information um, about how northcom works and and how it deals with fema when there's big things like disasters and so you can see that they operate they're mentioning pittsburgh and the g20 in here um, talking about you know, disasters, whatnot, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, there's also this pretty crazy org chart that shows that Northcom is expanding. Um, they operate through FEMA regions, basically. They operate with something called Defense Coordinating Officers inside of every FEMA region office. So you see the Chicago Region 5 is Colonel Fulton and 20 people, 26 people in FEMA Region 4, etc., etc. Okay, so the other crucial piece of evidence to put in this mix is something called the Domestic Operational Law Handbook for Judge Advocates, which uh, is an official publication. You can easily find it on Google. And uh, it's got a lot of just, you know, generally spooky stuff in it. National Framework for Incident Management, uh, high, you know, chemical thingamajigs, support for civilian law enforcement, and now we'll just go to civil disturbance operations. There's also all the crap about drugs and stuff, too. but. We want to focus on Chapter 5, Civil Disturbance Operations. So this has a, just tons of details about all these different, you know, kinds of regulations and stuff. But hey, look, check this out. Right down there, U.S. Northcom, Con Plan 3502, major stuff being noted. So basically, as we go around and looking in this chapter, um, there's a lot of stuff, blah, 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 spooky stuff, blah, 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 lethality, blah, 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 blah. Um, and so, but as we get down there, um, we see, aha, SIDCONs. Now, SIDCONs are civil disturbance conditions, and they uh, 
are supposed to be levels of preparedness when something is about to happen and uh, represents increase in preparedness. And so it specifically says that NORTHCOM Con Plan 3502 describes how this system works. So again, we as we move along, we see other stuff, hot pursuit, blah, blah, blah. Now check this out. Should the task force be required to operate a detention facility, blah, blah, blah. Footnotes 85, 86. Riot control agents building a troops. So check it out. U.S. Nor Army Northcom, Comp Plan 3502, Comp Plan 3502, Comp Plan 3502, Comp Plan 3502. Other side, Comp Plan 3502 to uh, deal with the insurance claims for negligence. And so really, I mean, Comp Plan 3502 is just all over this dang thing. So basically, when we look at those two things together, we can see that what we found is the trigger for Comp Plan 3502. We found all these back references and um, Elsewhere in this chapter, it also just basically says that, uh, you know, that more or less Con Plan 3502 is an official plan for detention facilities. There it is, right there. So, I mean, if you're the kind of person that's concerned about things like FEMA camps and stuff like that, you got to realize that <laughs> this is exactly where the Con Plan 3502, it just fits right into all that stuff that people are worried about. And uh, this, again, also just proves basically that Garden Plot, the old plan from the 60s and the Kerner Commission, was officially replaced by these con plans, by Con Plan 3502. Basically, the proof is all right in here. So, once again, this is the Domestic Operational Law Handbook. So, um, yeah. All right, so hopefully these files that we found on the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers server can help illustrate this pretty secret framework that the military uses to run all these kinds of things. And we ask ourselves, you know, why should we take this seriously? I mean, this has domestic, you know, military detention of Americans. It has riot control stuff. It has intelligence stuff. It's a big secret plan, and it's clearly the kind of plan where things like the G20 and the RNC are based on. And so basically, it's, we need to call for transparency, we need full copies of all of these Con Plan 3502s and so forth, and uh, we basically just need to get the word out and have people know that this is where these plans come from. This is where the Deepwater Horizon structure came from, that's where this stuff came from. So please get this out there, and I want to thank uh, my friends with Twin Cities Indie Media and uh, Chicago Indie Media, Pittsburgh Indie Media, uh, Glass Bead Collective, uh, Cryptome.org, PublicIntelligence.net. So many different people have helped uh, teach me up to this point, and this is what I think everybody needs to see. So thank you for watching, and have a great day. For this, uh, oh boy, a bigger one is coming. There's no, we yet don't have a pattern here, correctly, when you, you see a tremor, this means something. Well, of course, there's always a bigger one coming, but in terms of being able to tell when it's going to happen, we have no idea. And we do try to look for patterns, but I think the more we look, the more we realize it's uh, very hard to see any repeatable pattern. So outside of, we know the corridor on the west coast, they, you know, from Seattle, Texas, so that Los Angeles. Now, another big area I've always heard of that people don't talk about much is St. Louis. So very quickly, tell us about that call. Well, uh, I don't think we know much about the fault except for the fact that there were three very large earthquakes, uh, two in 1811 and a third one in 1812, and then there was another mentioned six and a half earthquake in 1890s. Uh, those earthquakes uh, still have aftershocks today, so we can use the aftershocks from those earthquakes even almost 200 years ago to map where the faults uh, were. Uh, the big debate is whether we'll have another large one on those faults, and uh, to be honest, I don't think any of us know. All right. Well, Dr. Thomas Eaton, a lot of us here in Washington, D.C., getting an education on earthquakes and faults, so uh, I appreciate you uh, participating in that today. Thanks very much. All right. Well, that's our goal for now. Thanks for being An earthquake occurs when two plates or pieces of earth slip on a fault releasing stored energy in the form of radiating seismic waves, cracking rock, and heat produced from friction. The seismic waves travel through the Earth's crust, causing tremors and often shifting the landscape. Unlike interplate earthquakes such as those common to the North American West Coast, 
an intraplate earthquake is created along the interior of a tectonic plate. While most notable earthquakes occur near volatile plate boundaries, intraplate quakes can strike in usually stable regions, making them difficult to predict. Many large metropolitan areas in the central United States lie within reach of unpredictable and disastrous intraplate seismic activity. The New Madrid Seismic Zone is an area of intense intraplate seismic activity located in the deep interior of the North American tectonic plate. Stretching from northeast Arkansas through Missouri, Tennessee, and Kentucky, all the way to the southern tip of Illinois, this region has generated some of the most powerful and geologically disruptive earthquakes in U.S. history. A series of three such earthquakes which struck the central Mississippi Valley during the winter of 1811 and 1812 sent waves of destruction across the region and left the surrounding area in turmoil for months to come. At 2 a.m. on December 16, 1811, heavy tremors and a thunderous roar swept through the town of New Madrid, Missouri, a sparsely populated but thriving community on the coast of the Mississippi River. Residents reported seeing bizarre flashing lights, geysers of sand, and clouds of sulfur escaping from the ground. Portions of the Earth's surface lifted so high that they blocked the passage of the Mississippi River, causing the waters to flow backwards towards Illinois. The seismic shock waves were so powerful they spread for hundreds of miles across the country. Tremors were felt as far away as New York City. This first earthquake alone released energy greater than that of 1,000 atom bombs. Over the next few months, two more catastrophic earthquakes and thousands of smaller aftershocks struck the region, causing widespread destruction and creating several lakes from the waters of the Mississippi River.